What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and today I come to you with another review for another day for another set of systems. Today, it's Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Now, Mankind Divided is a first-person shooter RPG, sometimes platforming game of stealth, shooting, social subterfuge, and not a small amount of skullduggery. Sounds good. Mankind tells the tale of a return of Adam Jensen, our Keanu Reeves serial showering hero. We follow him as he tries to right the world's wrongs, discover the evil incarnate plans of overarching government agencies, and discover the joy of waterproof bionics as often as possible. So let's see how it did, shall we? As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's the review for Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Human overclocking the Charlie Sheen way, a gun that basically shoots knives, and a world where A-10 Warthog miniguns are hilariously labeled as trespassing deterrents. Graphics are up first. I think the one thing I noticed right away is that while each different hardware's version of Mankind Divided was a little less and less robust, the fact is, from the Xbox One to the PC, they all have their moments where they look excellent. From the ultra-detailed NPCs you engage in dirty-handed brain surgery with, to the socially and morally corrupt cops that frequently hold you up at check lines. There's an attention to detail, somewhat realistic level design as well, that's meted out in this logical way that still alerts gamers to various avenues in which they can play, but makes it also feel open and free. Function solidly meets form right in the middle of the levels, and without a doubt, it almost always works. There is something that I just really like about the look of the game as well. It might be the slightly less exaggerated tones and the lack of the urine filter that the last game was poured through. Here, we have a more subdued color palette to be sure, but one that seems to offer an incredibly interesting and more varied world than the prior titles, and also one that tries to present a more human story in a more realistic environment. Now, I can't say they hit that part all the time, but we'll get to it. You know, at first, in fact, there are actually locations that might even be a bit too busy with debris and digital NPCs mishmashing all over, but once you get into the flow of things, it's hard hard not to really be impressed with the way the game looks. Characters look good, animations are somewhat crisp, and while lip syncing is hilariously mistimed in all the versions, the colorful animations aren't. And let me say that again, the lip syncing is at times hilarious, kung fu theater bad. Other times, it's just off enough to make sure that you believe that everyone is traveling closer to the speed of light than the person talking, and that's why their words are coming out just a moment after their lips stop moving. It's not horrible, but it's noticeable. Also, for some reason, every time you do a takedown, the screen fades to black for a moment, before loading it. It's jarring and it'd be like fading to black every time Riddick took off his sunglasses in one of the pitch black movies. I mean, it, it happens all the time. Now, frame rate takes a hit on both consoles despite them being capped at 30. While the PC seems to be doing well, though its ultra settings, as future proofing as they may be, can really bring a powerful system down, especially when you start messing with textures. One nice thing, though, is the PC version is loaded with options. So for the most part, if you have a PC and think you can run it, you probably can, though it may look different and take different hits in particular places. The console versions seem to be a mix of settings from the PC from about low to medium, while the occasional lighting effect actually might be a high setting. I would say they all look good in their different ways, but as a package, Deus Ex as a whole really steps up above its older brothers. It offers a unique worldview and smartly aims for something a bit more realistic to solidify the growing story that they want to tell in this title. I like that, and despite the framiness of the console versions, I don't think anybody would be too unhappy playing them. Sound, music, and voice. Last another few months. You know, maybe he'll forget I owe him the money. Close my eyes for all this is true. You're right now. You sounded pissed when you called me in. Everything okay? Don't ever leave the field. And as always, sound is up first. Environmentally and atmospherically, this is phenomenal, with the winds in Dubai blowing intangible and almost piercing sandstorms, and the deathly whirring of the sentinels telling you at all times that the big eye in the sky is not only a peeping tom, but also has some serious anger issues. It's excellent overall locational sounds and effects on movement, explosions, NPCs, and environments. But the weapons themselves didn't really hit well for me, especially in that lower end. It sounded like someone hooked a turbo up to a damn staple gun. Sure, it hurt, but it'd probably just disappoint you to death. But many watermelons died for this next sound effect, and that is of course up close and personal when you're introducing new holes into enemies' bodies. That wet squish of questionable contents from someone's stomach seeing sudden interruption is still really, really cool. I'd say as a package it's pretty good, but there is some lacking bits here and there. Music. 
So I love it. This is the kind of music I wish all games had. It knows when to step up as Jensen bursts past you in his best mimicry of a dishonored blink attack, and it knows when to step forward when encroaching on a new location from the street tops. Always there, but many times like a good friend, pretty quiet until you need him for something. The overall genre is certainly something along the lines of synth heavy and artificial, but that fits the game world and the dynamic cues really hit on target at all times. And there are a number of tracks that have this little bit of a John Carpenter beat to them that I dug. And of course that brings us to voice. Now listen, it's Adam Jensen most of the time. It's like Keanu Reeves and Whisperface from the Person of Interest TV show adopted a baby just to teach him how to speak. And I get it, it's whispery and oddly truncated at times, but to me, that's Jensen, a man who might've forgot more about being human than most of us. And with that, might've also forgot how to work his voice box a little bit, whatever. It's good and it reflects the character's unique style, I think. Now what about everybody else? Well, honestly, it's not bad at all. It's easy to forget that everyone in the Deus Ex games are really sidekicks to whomever you're playing, and especially here. So with a good deal of NPCs one and done and others sticking around between missions actually like their deliveries. Now, most are delivered with a suitable air that reflects what they're saying, but there are a couple that are just outright not hitting, like your main boss at the starting. For reasons unknown, he sounds more like he's reading a script or walking down the sidewalk than someone engaged in a checkmate step game with local police and terrorist cells. Other than that, I think they all do a pretty good job of solidifying the atmosphere. Good voice. Gameplay. I think one of the truisms we learned from Deus Ex games is that you can't keep a good man Borg down. In fact, Jensen is a bit like that robot from the short circuit movies, Johnny Five, except he doesn't spend the entire game claiming he's alive. Instead, he spends this entire game wishing half his robot shit worked better, spending good amounts of time moving around levels of augments so that he doesn't overclock and explode. You follow Jensen in another geographically tight adventure in the future, uncovering evil plots and being the world's most advanced peeping Tom. But let's talk about story just for a second. It starts out with some terrorists blowing shit up, as every Saturday morning really does, and Jensen's assigned to investigate. But as with every Deus Ex, there is intrigue, treachery, and the occasional rogue agent moments. But remember all the hubbub around the story's treatment of augmented or augs and how it's going to be a poignant and how it's going to matter, so much so that the company decided it was a good idea to steal a racially charged tagline, adjust it, and throw it into the trailers. Yeah, that's about as deep as they cover it. Oh, you do have to stop at checkpoints, others don't have to, unless you're getting off the incredibly well-maintained train lines, which, for reasons unknown, let you pretty much sprint right past the guards. Most of the time, they just mumble something about soup, and otherwise you move on. But the game's desire to present a structured worldview based on today's issues, but altered for the future, just completely falls flat, or, again, unfortunately, feels like it's just sort of tacked on. Even the side missions, of which there are a good deal, and which they're very well written, still feel like the typical NPC language just gussied up to impact the player with their wording. One of the reasons is that there is no real danger in the game until later to the character, resulting in this odd, oh, see how horrible my life could be while I fucking tear your friends in half and read people's emails from their hack computers while they stand right next to me. There's that old saying, show, don't tell. This game does a lot of telling, but not necessarily as much showing as I'd like. Now, Jensen is actually pretty cool and the gameplay is solid. He has new and old augmentations with the new ones having to be balanced or they will fry his brain, as I said prior. You see, that's right, despite some serious tech, Jensen still has to worry about his CPU speed because duct taping a bucket of water to his skull and a fish pump is not gonna cut it. So what he has to do all the time is basically turn on and off old and new augments so that he can basically run his system. Now, first let's discuss some of the old augments. The stuff that was there is still there, a robust feature set of walking, thinking machine specifics like hacking, targeting systems, and the ability to see pretty much everything that is going on in any one place with his patented, of course, God Vision. But the new abilities, which are quickly given to you at the start of the game, are things like the wicked set of skin armors, where your flesh turns into the equivalent of damage-soaking battle techs, and things like remote hacking, which is almost hilariously overpowered the moment you get it. It's remote and it's hacking, so remember those times in past games where you game to the game, hacking while just barely out of reach of enemies and that kind of stuff, and it leads to all sort of oddness? Well, now it's straight up planned for, and ultimately powerful, it leads to this oddness with Jensen that's both cool and a bit frustrating as you game. See, the basic skills are inherently powerful, and due to how they're set up, the levels seem based around them for the most part. The augmented augments, or awesome awesomer stuff, is sort of extra frosting on the cake, and can result in less than satisfying interactions with the levels or the characters, and at the very least less impactful than the original basic ones. And while basic gameplay is the same stuff that we saw in the prior Deus Ex, it was the narration that I forgot just how much I cherished in these titles. I welcome that chatty Cathy style in which this game presents its data. In fact, it can take a second or two to get accustomed to the level of detailed discussion the game presents you as two guys ponder the working habits of a third, all the while Jensen's berating the first. It's unique, 
It's lengthy, and it's straight up RPG style, so be prepared for Jensen to occasionally wax poetic. So that's taking care of some of the social stuff, let's talk about gunplay and hand-to-hand. -hand. Gunplay is good, while the PC has the smoothness of a mouse, the console version, both of them, seem to be a bit laggy, and I was not at all happy with their responsiveness, and this was with the patches. It wasn't impossible, but setting the sensitivities never really felt perfect, like the dead zone was just a little bit too big. But in the end, control was responsive enough, and I was able to jump between augments, hand-to-hand, uh, -hand, and also gunplay with almost no problem. But that doesn't mean there are no problems, because basically while you're fighting, you find out that the augmentations were designed in such a way that they're basically vampirically sucking energy so fast that you're going to constantly be shuffling its uses around. So it's like a survival game where Duracell are this version's palm trees that you're whacking, where you just constantly are looking for power. And sadly, someone decided that taking someone down as existed in the prior game requires energy, which can, if you're not careful, result in this weird oddity where you're in the middle of a room having killed two guys with your bare hands, but then Jensen just sort of shrugs like, dude, dude, no more killing. So you have to grab a shotgun and introduce someone's intestines to the intriguing idea of being outside their body, which while always hilarious, sort of goes against the stealth that you're originally trying to do. And there's also a crafting system. And while mostly throw away, at times it did become useful, especially when I was in a pinch. Now, lastly, there are a number of invisible walls in the game that any true explorer is going to probably find really quickly. I can't say I was at all happy with that. But you know what? There are layers to this game, and where mankind divided strength lies is in getting in bed with the series past strengths, multi-tiered gameplay executions, and movement that, when you're good, feels like an organic death parkour mixed with this enemy mulching roller coaster as you hack a door, read someone's email, stop a turret from firing, sneaky sneak the life from a guard, drop his body behind a plant, and then walk out the front door like nothing ever happened. Now, sadly, that also brings me to AI, which I have to say is good for about 90% of the time and then randomly just flat out shuts down. During engagements, I saw full-fledged intelligent movement with flanks, double flanks, attempts to snuff me out from higher levels, and even some basic pincer movements. And my God, never ever try to run up a flight of stairs if these guys are anywhere nearby. It's like stairs and you are their bitter enemies, hated since the Dark Ages. These dudes were able to wean me off life with just a few shots, and I love that added strategy in trying to figure out how to get to those higher levels. However, and this is one of the oddest things I think I've seen in a long time. A consistent drive towards their ranks sends them fucking scattering. It's like they all see you and are like, oh shit, he isn't fooled, we do suck, and then they start dancing around objects or hiding in doorways like rectangles or some Illuminati secret of invisibility. It's odd, and it doesn't always affect the gameplay, but when it does, well, at least it's a little bit funny. And now it's time to talk a little bit about Fun Factor. It is fun, and it's got game for days. If you're running and gunning, you can get through it in 10 hours easy. If you're doing everything and fulfilling all quests, double that. And I suggest you do just that, because going off the beaten path in any Deus Ex game, looking in shops, and just exploring shows you well-thought-out worlds that, while still able to funnel you from one waypoint to the other with almost industrial ease and efficiency, it's a place that is always best explored slowly. Now, I think this is where we mentioned the strange breach mode, which is oddly done sort of an after effect, an online mode that's a bit horde and a bit what the hell. I'm going to need more time before really seeing what that is, but to me, it was not at all enticing. On the other hand, if you just want to play in this game and do some FPS battling, it might be for you, but I don't know if that's Deus Ex's really true strengths anyway. And lastly, gone are the almost universally despised boss battles and oddly paced moments. Almost everything in Deus Ex feels like it's organically fit within the title. Even the strangely dressed 1980s reject, who looks like half valley girl, half renaissance fair player trying to bring back studded armor, had a reason to be there. There's almost nothing wasted in the title right now, which maybe begs the question, was it really split into two titles from one originally larger one? And if that rumor turns out to be true, then by God, this would have been one massive game. So as always, I rate games on a buy, wait for a sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale. You know what? The last one we had was wait for a deep, deep sale. This one is a buy, and I can say that regardless of platform you're playing it on. It won't be perfect, but it will be awesome. This is a game that is absolutely a blast, and I think could easily have multiple playthroughs without any issue whatsoever, even from gamers who maybe don't normally do that. So anyway, that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, thumbs up. Maybe check out the Patreon, the Reddit. Always follow me on Twitter. That's where I'm talking about any game that I'm covering. If you dislike the video, feel free to give it a thumbs down. Make sure you comment in the YouTube. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.